So the first thing you need to do is install the Anaconda if, if you don't have one on your, uh, or, or, yeah, on your computer. So um, once you go there and then you can download the uh, installation file, and then depending on your um, operating system, you can choose the different types of installer. And then for the case of the Windows, uh, Windows 10, yet, um, for example, if you don't know the um, bit of your operating system, then uh, one option is you can just click the um, click uh, uh, right, but, uh, 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 right uh, button on your mouse. And then you will see the system menu here. And then inside that system menu, you should be able to tell yeah, what kind of bit um, uh, operating system you are using. So <clears throat> check out this um, bit and then um, choose the uh, corresponding um, um, installer. And then the, um, yeah, because I already have the uh, uh, Anaconda on my computer, I won't uh, show you the, how it can be installed, but it is quite straightforward. So I won't go through more details, but, uh, um, oops, sorry. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah, and then I, now I will just assume that you already installed the um, Anaconda. So yeah, once you install the Anaconda, then the next thing you have to do is um, um, install, um, creating the new environment. In principle, you can just start without uh, creating a new environment, but I, I actually strongly recommend that you should uh, create a new environment because that's the essence of the, um, or the, um, yeah, that is the uh, benefit of using the Anaconda instead of just uh, trying to install the Python as a, um, um, as a um, just a um, software. And then the, yeah, the, the way you can create a, a new um, environment is shown here. But to do this, the first thing you have to do is open the uh, command window, uh, command line window, and then it can be done by, um, checking out this um, Anaconda prompt. And then once you do that, then you should be able to uh, open this, um, um, uh, uh, this kind of um, um, window or the command, uh, command prompt. And then um, you just type um, create, uh, conda create uh, minus N. And then in this case, I will call the new environment name as Kiskit. And then, um, Make sure to choose the Python 3. Yeah. Then yeah, it will just uh, create a new environment. And then the reason we um, create the, and then yeah, here you just uh, um, type yes, uh, or yeah, just uh, type and uh, just to press enter, and then default will be yes. And then the, the reason um, um, Anaconda allow you to create a new environment is that the uh, Depending on the package you are interested, um, some package might require um, some version of library, and then some other application require the same library but with different version. And in that case, you have to choose which version of library you will uh, install. And then that is a very um, confusing situation. So instead of um, Allowing, allow, allow you in, uh, using only the uh, one um, um, version of library, you just create a new type of environment. And then uh, depending on the environment, you might just uh, install the uh, for, uh, for, uh, version X um, in A environment, and then version Y in um, different uh, B environment. And then de uh, depending on what, what kind of, um, application you are interested, you just uh, switch your in, uh, current environment. So that's the concept of the um, um, environment in the um, Anaconda. And then um, now if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, figure out um, what kind of, um, um, what kind of environment do you currently have, then the, um, the, uh, the command you can use is conda environment list. So um, if you uh, type like a uh, conda emv uh, list, then it will, yeah, this will show, show me uh, what kind of environment I currently have. And then I have different types of um, environment. 
and then this is what I just did, uh, created before, and then this is what I just created. And then now I'm going to um, switch to the new environment, a newly created environment, which is Qiskit. So um, what I can do is just uh, type the Conda activate Qiskit. Like this. And then now yeah, you can see that the, the name of current environment is changed to the uh, Qiskit. And finally, um, what I have to do is install the Qiskit um, using the PIP. And then the, um, um, yeah, so like uh, PIP install and Qiskit and bracket and visualization and so forth. And this will take a while until yeah, everything will be um, properly installed. So I will um, pause the you know, video and then um, continue once um, everything is uh, properly um, installed. Once the installation is over, the next thing I have to do is that um, 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 yeah, install the um, uh, Jupyter. And then in this case, make sure that you don't use the PIP, but use the Conda because um, if you just use the PIP, then there will be a lot of trouble in um, the existing installation. So um, yeah, just to follow whatever is written here, like Jupyter, and then make sure that it is Y, not um, I. And then again, yeah, this will just continue. And then, the, yeah, I will pause. Once the installation of the, um, the uh, Jupyter is over, then uh, we can, uh, now we can move to the working directory. And then the, yeah, here I just, uh, yeah, for my case, I uh, created my working directory uh, under the Qiskit, under the uh, uh, documents, but yeah, you can choose, uh, you can make whatever you want on your machine. And then once you are in the working directory, then now you can type the Jupyter notebook. And the uh, you know, web server will start, uh, the, the Jupyter server will start. And then the first thing you will see is like um, uh, this um, uh, list of files. And then, yeah, of course, um, if you just started in the empty, uh, full, uh, empty directory, then you won't be able to see any of the file. But um, yeah, this uh, can be used as a um, uh, kind of a file navigator. And then in this case, um, let me just open this uh, Jupyter tutorial file and show you some um, examples. So, um, and then make sure that, uh, um, that there is no problem in um, here. Yes, if you have some problem in the, with your installation, then you will see a, a kernel error appearing here. So yeah, let me just continue. Uh, yeah, so yeah, for example, if you want to change the name of your um, Jupyter file, then you can just uh, uh, click here and then rename, and then the change will be actually reflected here. And then the uh, and also the um, green um, icon shows that this um, um, this notebook is currently running while the others are uh, not running. And then in this case, um, yeah, Jupyter has uh, is quite useful when you are working with some kind of interactive um, or when you are doing some interactive uh, programming. But there is some. Um, um, concept which might be confusing at, at, at first time if you are using the Jupyter. So that's why I'm trying to give you some um, um, intuition or some explanation. And then if it, is, if it is only for the programming, then probably you think that these, all of these um, features are not necessary because this is what, we, what you really want. And then here, if I change whatever value and then, um, just uh, uh, typing your source, source code won't yeah, execute. So to make sure that uh, once you write down your um, code, then if you want to run that uh, 
that uh, code, then you have to run the entire cell. And then each of these are called as a cell. So even, even if uh, you did, you might not see um, any of these, um, they are separated as a cell, but as you are clicking, you are, um, or as you are moving around here, then you can see that there is a boundary of the cell. And then yeah, each of these are called as a cell. And then, the, you know, for example, if you um, um, want to have an additional code, but not inside the same cell, but in, if you want to have additional cell uh, right below this cell, then one option is you can just um, add the um, a cell right before, um, right before, uh, right below this one. But um, yeah, so if you want to um, add the cell between these two cells, then you, you just uh, choose this one and then um, press the uh, insert cell below. Or if you want to add the cell in, um, on top of this, or between these two line, uh, these two cells, then you can also yeah, insert the cell above. However, this is a little bit um, inconvenient that you should always use the um, a menu, especially when you are doing a lot of typing, uh, a lot of coding. So in that case, what people want to do is work in the um, work only with the keyboard. And then if you want to know um, how, uh, uh, and then yeah, there are a few um, useful um, or convenient um, keyboard shortcut. So, and then I, I just uh, wrote down here and then more important concept here. Yeah, so as you, as you can see here, yeah, here I can do whatever. Yeah, so um, I can do yeah, something like print um, ABC. And then in this case, um, it is just the source code, so it is not um, being executed. But um, um, if I also do um, like a print um, um, four, uh, four, point, uh, four plus five, and then if you want to make sure that this cell will run, then yeah, one option is um, press the run cell. But um, yeah, and then uh, you you can see the result of um, um, evaluation uh, the result of evaluation of this cell. Um, but um, probably you feel that it is a little bit inconvenient that I, I should always use the um, menu here. And then the, another thing you might note is that the, this cell and this cell seems to be different. So um, this cell looks like a well-formatted um, document, while this one is exactly what you do with the source code or the programming. So what's the difference be between these two types of cell? Yeah, they have different, uh, and then they are called as, uh, yeah, so, these types of the cells are called as the code cell type, while this um, document type, like a uh, document, uh, doc, uh, document like um, part or a cell, are called as a markdown. And then the, you might also wonder whether I should always use the mouse because um, when you are doing a lot of um, 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 coding, then you you generally don't want to uh, use the um, mouse. So as I, as I press the um, arrow, um, arrow down button, then um, as you can see, the selection of a cell is moving down, or if you use the up arrow, then it can also go, up, uh, go, to, the, uh, go to the upper uh, cells. Then you might wonder how I can edit uh, this one, because as, as you are going up or down, the the selection of work, the, the focus uh, cell is uh, changing. However, that does not necessarily mean that the, uh, um, this part, uh, the coding part can be changed. So in this case, um, um, here as, as I'm moving up or down with this kind of arrow, then this, uh, this kind of um, situation is called as command mode. And then if we want to add edit uh, the code here or the document uh, document here, then you should actually enter into the edit mode. And to go into the edit mode, all you have to do is just to press enter key. So um, if I want to edit this code, then all I have to do is uh, move move the focus to this cell first, and then type enter. 
then as you can see here, now you can see the um, cursor blinking here. And then here, yeah, you can do whatever um, um, edit. And then you can also go to the uh, next cell. And uh, as, I, as I'm just moving the, um, I'm just pressing the arrow, but, uh, arrow button uh, pointing up. And then if you just keep uh, going to the upper cell, then suddenly this one also changed to some kind of editable mode. But um, you might also feel that this, this doesn't look like uh, what you, you used to see. And then the, now yeah, what, we, uh, what we are currently in is the um, edit mode of the markdown cell. As I mentioned before, the purpose of the markdown cell is the, is, it is for the visualization, or I, I should not say visualization. Maybe I should say that for the documentation. So, um, but this looks, um, doesn't look uh, such a nice uh, documentation. While if I press uh, shift enter, then the, yeah, yeah, when my cursor is um, edit mode and then in one of the cell, and if I press the shift enter, uh, shift enter, then suddenly it also changes to some kind of uh, documentation um, format. So, um, so, uh, here, what am I doing? So what I'm doing is uh, switching between the command mode and the edit mode. So what you just saw before was uh, we were in the edit mode and then you can actually change the content of the, you know, this uh, document, uh, this markdown cell or this source, source code. But now you cannot see the cursor yeah, because of what, uh, as, as I'm moving the, as I pressing the um, arrow key, what is changing is the focus of the cell or the uh, main, main uh, yeah, the, the cell which um, has uh, this, um, uh, this kind of boundary, but um, uh, you cannot change it. And then in this case, I'm, uh, yeah, I generally say that I'm in the command mode. And again, if I, yeah, inside uh, from the uh, command mode, if I want to go to the edit mode, then all I have to do is just to press enter. And then yeah, now I'm back in the edit mode. And then if I want to go back to the command mode, then all I have to do is press escape key. So here, if I press the escape key, then I can go back to the, um, the ed, uh, command mode. And um, there are a few um, um, convenient um, shortcut I frequently use. And that is when, yeah, as, as you are uh, editing your, um, 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 Jupyter notebook, then one of the frequent um, operation you have to do is add new cells. And then as I already showed you, one option is using the uh, menu up, up here, but that is inconvenient. And then fortunately there is a shortcut corresponding to the, to adding the, the new cell. And then A means the uh, add, add another cell above and then B means the below. So if I want to, yeah, so currently I'm in this cell and, or let's say that I'm in this cell and then I want to add some new cell between these two cells, then all I have to do is just to press um, um, keyboard A like this one, then I can have the new cell. And then let's say that I also add on, another new cell below here, then all I have to do is just to press B and then yeah, we can create a new cell. And then here, I'm still in the command mode because uh, um, I can move around, but um, you know, I cannot edit. So again, if I want to edit, then what I have to press the uh, type the uh, press the enter key, and then now I can edit whatever I want. And then now I want to go back to the uh, I want to uh, escape to the uh, command mode. So yeah, all I have to do is press the escape key like here. So yeah, escape. And then I go down there and then, oh, and then I forgot to mention that um, even though I wrote down some uh, code here and then here, it, yeah, if I run it, uh, run this code, it will give an error because this is, uh, this has nothing to do with the programming. But as you can see here, they are not actually um, being executed or run and then uh, explicitly, if I want to um, execute uh, this cell, what I have to do is press 
shift enter and then in this case uh, if i just do that then it will be executed and similarly you know, again this is a, a wrong code because it has not no meaning but if you just uh, uh, try to execute then the, you should you know, press uh, shift and enter and then you will get uh, this kind of error and then you also should uh, note that with the you know, with this code cell yeah, yeah, whenever you, you do some execution, then you will get the number for each of the cell. And then the, yeah, this, yeah, so even, even if, um, if you just look, look at the location of these two cells, then you might think that this cell will be executed first and then this will be executed next. But here, yeah, if you see these numbers, then what all it says is, this cell was executed before this one. Yeah, so yeah, th this um, these uh, numbers will be useful when you are trying to figure out which one was actually um, executed after which and before which. And finally, uh, and then um, let me also give you some uh, overview of the cell type. And then um, I said that, uh, these uh, these types are called as a code cell, and then that is a very typical um, sh um, shape for the uh, for the uh, just the programming. But in many of case, you also want to do some kind of documentation, and then in that case, markdown cell is much more useful. So here, yeah, this cell is made as a markdown cell, while this one was made as a um, um, code cell, then how can I decide which one will become a code cell and which one will become a markdown? And here is a um, shortcut key to make the cell as a code or a markdown. So yeah, even though yeah, this is um, executable code, if I press M key as a markdown, and then it will turn into some um, um, editor, editable documentation. So here, even if I uh, write, uh, I um, type, uh, I press the shift and then type or evaluate the cell, it actually, uh, this is not executing. But, and you will also note that um, uh, this part became some kind of title uh, rather than uh, some um, comment. Uh, initially, as a code, yeah, if I just uh, um, go into the um, edit mode, then I will, um, you will see that this, uh, there was a um, pound sign, which generally means the um, uh, um, comment in the Python code. But here, yeah, inside the markdown cell, this, um, this symbol means that the, the, uh, the, uh, the rest of the line will be interpreted as the title, uh, title type, yeah, something like this one. And then yeah, there are also, uh, hier hierarchy of the title. So yeah, this is the uh, uh, highest level. And then if you have a, a double um, a pound sign, then this will be the uh, second second level. And then yeah, again, if you want to see this um, markdown cell as a document um, like a shape, then yeah, you can just evaluate this one. And then as you can see here now, they look like uh, they are under some kind of uh, hierarchy. And now, if you realize that, well, uh, there was a problem, yeah, this was originally for the code, not for the documentation, then in that case, all you have to do is just to press Y when the focus is in this cell. So if I press Y, then now it becomes, uh, this turns into the code, code style. So that's, the, uh, that's how you can switch between the markdown cell and the code cell. And then even for the markdown cell, yeah, there is a few things I want to uh, point out. Yeah, first of all, where does the name markdown come from? If you remember that the uh, HTML, which is very, uh, you are familiar with the um, word uh, acronym HTML. And then how, what does this um, HTML mean? This means the hypertext markup language. And then, yeah, so in this case, um, markup means that the, yeah, even though yeah, this um, entire uh, this uh, the when you re uh, when you look at the uh, this cell, then it looks like a well um, 
well uh, formatted document, but to yeah on uh, yeah in yeah in the HTML language uh, to yeah, show this kind of um, um, shape, then you actually have to do uh, put a lot of tags, and then such kind of tag was a little bit annoying. Yeah, and then yeah yeah for for this case, um, this is not the um, syntax for the um, HTML, but uh, yeah. As you can see here, if you ever you know, did any um, coding for the, uh, for the HTML, then you would see that uh, there was some kind of tagging uh, tag and in the um, HTML, and then a lot of these are not uh, as a uh, um, will this part won't be shown as uh, um, content, but um, these are used to represent the, or format the entire documentation. So. Um, some, somehow the simplified version of the markup language is the markdown language. And then yeah, uh, Jupyter is using the markdown language. And then yeah, if you are interested in the uh, um, detail of uh, all the syntax of the markdown language, then you have to actually learn it by yourself. But um, there is a little, a few um, summary I can give you. Yeah, so again, yeah, the, the number of pound side will make the, uh, if you have more than uh, one or more than one uh, pound sign starting in the as, um, in the line, then they will become the, you know, some level of the title. And then the, if you don't have any other um, thing, then they will just uh, appear as a regular um, syntax. However, how can you um, uh, create something like a equation like this one? And then um, the, the syntax you have to use is the LaTeX um, um, syntax. And then um, if you are not familiar with uh, the LaTeX um, equation, um, then you have to look it up on the, uh, um, on the Google. And then, the, yeah, for example, yeah, if you want to yeah, write down some, something like one over two, then there is a syntax or a command for, the, um, for this, um, uh, this part, and then this was the um, uh, cat notation. And then in this case, all you have to do is um, just to uh, write down the psi and then right angle. Yeah, and then all of them should be surrounded by uh, by this um, um, two dollar sign. Yeah, then yeah, they will become uh, they will be recognized as uh, equation, and then they will appear as the equation. Yeah, something like this one. So yeah, um, I cannot cover everything about the Jupiter, but at least I, I hope uh, this can give you some uh, intuition. And then if you are interested in more uh, shortcuts, then you have to yeah, look it up, uh, uh, look at the uh, help and then keyboard shortcut. Then you should be able to see that there is a command mode versus the edit mode. And then yeah, especially in the command mode, there are a lot of uh, um, useful um, short key. So um, yeah, I hope that yeah, you, by now you are at least uh, a little bit familiar with the concept of the Jupyter. Now I will go back to the main um, recording. <laughs> 